Hello and welcome back. I'm Bob Norton, CEO of Airtight Management and creator of the CEO and Entrepreneur Bootcamp. This segment is about building your management team and we're going to focus on personality testing, interviewing, and employee development. If you haven't heard it enough times already, 50% of a CEO's job is finding the right people, developing them, and creating the culture that will make them effective and high-performing. So a good deal of the boot camp is focused on that, and there are three different segments in this course about personality and employee selection. So let's start with the agenda for this particular segment. First, we're going to talk about some personality archetypes. Now, everyone's heard that term, and we're going to just use it as a reference and memory aid, or a metaphor if you prefer, to help you understand some of the archetypes that are important to use and understand and, of course, avoid. Personality tests, we're going to talk about three different personality tests. We'll talk a little bit about partnerships. Most entrepreneurs that are new should probably have a partner. I don't mean that in any technical sense or 50-50 split of the ownership shares or anything like that. I mean someone that complements you and your skill set as well as your personality in the development of a business because uh, climbing this mountain alone is very difficult and your odds will go up if you have a good complementary partner. Employee development is the, uh, the growth of employees and very important. And we're going to talk about personal development, which is the individual developing their own personal capabilities and attributes, personality skills, social intelligence, those things that can help them be a better employee for you. And we're going to talk about a checklist for, for hiring and various methodologies and a few little t- uh, sample case studies and some of the best people in the business to read from and, and use this information to, to do well in hiring because you really want to have an 80 plus percent success at hiring when the average company is probably well under 50 percent. So you'll see this model at the beginning of a lot of these things and the important thing or reference here is to remember that hiring is so critical at these two stages, raw startup and early revenue, because any one person can literally kill your company or delay it for a year or or cause all kinds of trouble because those first few people are such a large percentage of the contribution of, of the staff, especially the ones that are the senior people handling the handling the major problems and creation of the value proposition of the company. And so you can't take too much time or be too careful hiring at these early stages because your company is very fragile and vulnerable and it will be very disrupted by one of these people being a bad choice or the wrong choice for any of the major three dimensions that we talked about in the skill set matrix. So, now let's get into the first area of this segment, which is personality archetypes and testing. This is a complex and confusing area. You may even call it gestalt, because there are so many variables that are unpredictable. And I think we all know that psychology is a pretty soft science, and so you can only really look at it for statistics and models that can be used, and it's not going to be repeatable with any given person at any particular time. The invention of psychology, or maybe better put, the evolution of psychology over the last century, uh, has gone from Sigmund Freud to Carl Jung and Napoleon Hill, and, and there are many, many other experts on different areas of personalities. But there is empirical proof that there is some use to this. And here's sort of a slide that shows that. When you look at the 16 personality types that are in the Myers-Briggs test, you actually see very statistically significant deviations in income of these people. Now, of course, every one of these people isn't gravitating towards the ideal 
uh, job or career for themselves just based on their personality type. Uh, they could be driven into career by many other factors, you know, opportunism, family, opportunity, friends they know, any number of things could certainly lead them to something that's not optimum for their particular personality type. But I would bet that the fact that the standard deviation here is so significant, it sort of proves that these personality types have some uh, validity in grouping people uh, and, and can be useful tools. Rodney Dangerfield here, just a little comic relief. You can read that quickly. And now I'm going to go into talking about archetypes of personality. And some of these are meant to be metaphors so that you can remember them using characters you may know from TV. So we all know there are archetypes, and, and good film and good TV series use these archetypes to generate laughs in a comedy or to generate drama in other you know, genres of film and TV, right? So oftentimes there's a complement of character types, and the comedy or the drama comes from the very differences in those character types, right? And we need those differences to complement each other, especially in an early stage startup, where we need to make sure we have each of the key types of personality. And we're going to talk about that in the very simple HOTS test, the four basic personality types shortly. But friends is, is a good example of thinking about the, the classic characters. And of course, it's one of the most successful TV series of all time running, I think, for 10 or 12 years in the number one spot on Thursday night back in the 90s. So there's, you know, there's an airhead, Phoebe, there's a comic, Chandler, there's a sweetheart, which is a Jennifer Aniston's character, Rachel. There's the, the sort of the nerd, ir irritating person. And then uh, his sister, who was very OCD, Monica, right? And then there was the womanizer, who was also a little slow in this case. Could have been two separate characters with those characteristics, of course. But I'm, I'm doing this to give you sort of reference points and memory aids on some of the archetypes that we're going to run into. So good TV really uses these well. And it's often exaggerated, like series like The Odd Couple and things like that. Take these things to sort of an extreme for comic effect. Realistic writing makes for good stories. It also makes it very believable. And, of course, there's that old phrase, it's funny because it's true, right? Another set of very successful comedy that, that shows these archetypes and how they're used is Frasier, M.A.S.H., Seinfeld. So we've got M.A.S.H., which, again, has a womanizer, nice guy character in the form of Alden Alda or Hawkeye. The sweetheart is Major Houlihan, nicknamed Hot Lips, right? I could go on and on. And, and not all of them are the same, of course, but there's an awful lot of overlaps because there are only, I mean, I think Hollywood recognizes 14 to 20 different archetypes. Of course, it depends who you listen to and what model. And people are always trying to create unique and interesting characters. But the, the point is that these people, and all people, can be classified under these certain characters. So if we look at Frasier, again, I'm not changing that bottom line, but you can take those labels and throw them against the characters in Frasier just as easily, right? There's a comic, which is the radio a personality, Mad Dog, the airhead, which is the helper. The, the womanizer is actually a, a manizer in this particular one, right? The, the slut sort of character that uh, Frazier's uh, assistant in radio played, which was, you know, always a butt of comedy. And there was the old sage who was Frazier's father. And, and of course, Frazier and his brother were both sort of OCD and over-the-top, exaggerated, ridiculous, right? Look at the next, you know, major hit series. I mean, we're going down from, you know, from across three or four decades of the cop, com, com, to, uh, top comedy here. And you're seeing these same kind of personality types, right? The airhead, you know, the, uh, the lazy guy, which is one that hadn't shown up a lot before, uh, etc. And then, of course, the Big Bang, most recently one of the 
the top, or if not the top, comedy show for many, many years in a row, based on Sheldon Jacobson, and oh, Sh- Sheldon being the uh, the main character, and has even created the spin-off uh, series Young Sheldon, right, which has also been very successful. So again, you see the use of a complementary set of people. And I would equate the creation of a movie or a TV series in some ways. It's a good metaphor for the creation of a company. You need a complementary set of characters that are going to carry out the uh, the storyline and create tension and comedy and drama.